In today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn a low resolution logo icon into a very high resolution image. Now, this is my example of the Sleepy Owl and I think it's an Indian coffee company. And as you can see, this document, let me actually show you. The document size is 256 pixels times 256 pixels. And we're going to turn it into this document. And you can see it is way sharper. So this is before and this is after. And from my ruler, you can see that this document is 2,500 pixels times 2,500 pixels. So it's almost 10 times the size of the first image. Now, there are a couple of requirements. It is the easiest when you've got a one colored image, but I can show you later how this also works for multicolored logos. The logo cannot be too detailed with two fine lines. It is just not going to work. And the logo has to be on a white background. So this doesn't work for PNG logos. And I'll show you exactly why and how to solve this later in the video. But let me first show you how to turn this into a high resolution logo. The first thing what we want to do is we want to up the size of our canvas so we're gonna go to document and we're gonna go to resize document and we're gonna just 10x this thing so let's well let's just add a zero at the back to 10 exit and then we're gonna hit resize now we've upscaled our image there are only two steps in order to turn this image into a super high resolution crisp image and the first thing that we've got to do is to blur the logo now I know it sounds very counterintuitive but this is just something I just learned and you can see that we've got a very pixelated line so let's actually add a live filter and then a Gaussian blur and we're gonna increase the radius and we want to increase the radius so much that we get a smooth line so around eight nine pixels is gonna do the job for us and I'm gonna cross this thing off Let's press command zero to zoom out. Now the second and last step for this to work is that we've got to increase the contrast of the image. There are two ways to increase the contrast of your image. Either you use the levels adjustment layer or the curves adjustment layer. And I just prefer to use the levels adjustment layer in this case because it's easier. So I'm going to press command L, which is the levels adjustment layer keyboard shortcut. Now, what we want to do is we want to increase the contrast. So we're going to increase the black levels and decrease the white levels and watch the magic happen. So I'm going to increase the black level. And you can see that our sleepy all gets blacker, more black. And once I decrease the wide level you can actually see that we get our super crisp quality back of the image now let me zoom in zoom in quite a lot because if you go too far it gets the edge gets gets quite jagged and this is something i don't really like so i want to go somewhere around there this looks natural to me and let's zoom out and that is how to turn your low resolution image into a super high resolution image. Now, as mentioned before, this works perfectly with a black and white logo, but it is a different process, kind of slightly different. It just has one extra step for um, a colored logo. All right, so here we've got the second example and you can see that this image has got colors. Now, I want to quickly show you why the technique that we just used doesn't work for colored images. And that is because if you increase the contrast, so I'm going to use my levels adjustment layer to increase the contrast, you will see that the colors just get messed up. So that's why it doesn't work. But there is a workaround for this one. So what we want to do is we want to save the colors to our swatches panel. So I've got my swatches panel right here. If you cannot find it, go to window, go to swatches and just open it and it will pop up somewhere. The next thing that you want to do is click on the hamburger menu icon and then add application palette. And this creates any new palette. You can rename it. So I renamed it coffee logo. And what we want to do is click the, on the eyedropper tool and the radius, we want to set it to three by three or five by five. And that is just because we want to sample from a bigger area because our image is so low resolution that we might sample the wrong color. So I'd rather pick the average. So I'm going to click on the, the first color. And what you want to do is then click this icon to add current fill to palette. And that's how I got all of these three right in here. Now, the next step, what we want to do is same thing. We're going to increase the document size. I'm going to just 10 exit once again. And actually by recording this tutorial, I just figured out a great way to do this for uh, colored logos. So we still want to blur the image. So I'm just going to uh, create a live filter, Gaussian blur and increase the blur so that we don't have these 
really bad edges basically like this i'm going to press command zero to zoom out and what i want to do now is i want to use a threshold adjustment layer so i'm going to go to my adjustment layers click on threshold and look what is, what is going to happen it's just going to turn this image into a black and white version like this maybe and i'm going to cross this off now i want to merge all of these layers together so um, i can right click on my layers panel and then merge visible and now we've got everything on a separate layer so let me hide the the other two and what we want to do is we basically just want to color this image right here so what i'm gonna do as last is i'm just gonna grab my flood fill tool and i'm gonna select the color make sure you got your right layer selected and just click on yeah the specific shapes that need the color so this one needs to be the darker brown and this needs to be the green one now if we zoom in very very much you can see that these lines are pretty pretty hard and this is something i don't really like so if we want to smoothen it out a little bit we can add a slight blur so of 0.1 pixel blur to actually smoothen it out a little bit now the result isn't perfect but it is so much more decent than before so let me show you this was the before and this is the after now there's one more example that i want to show you and that is when there is no white background so that is this one right over here i'm gonna copy this image and you can see that it doesn't have a white background now why this isn't gonna work is because we cannot add contrast to this black outline basically so um, if i would press command l on the keyboard right now and i would like to increase or decrease the contrast it just doesn't work so what we want to do first is we want to add a white background so i'm going to go to layer new fill layer swatches white and drag it below my image and now i want to merge these two together so a great way to do that is by command clicking the second layer group them together by pressing command g and then right click and rasterize and now it is just one layer with a white background and like this it is gonna work perfectly fine all right i hope you learned something new if you did give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe to the channel if you want more affinity photo tutorials see you in the next one ciao